Hi guys, this is Wirehead King, and today I'm going to be carrying on uh, the tutorial that I started. Um, this is part two, and it's basically rigging and animating a gun. So, if you haven't already seen part one, uh, I recommend you do because we set up this cool rig where you know you can. It's got this little thing that pulls back. Uh, it's got a nice trigger, and uh, it's got, got a nice little uh, thing as well where you can control the entire gun. So. Um, quick disclaimer, if uh, you, you're deciding that you're not going to watch part 1, uh, I didn't make this gun, I downloaded it from Blendswap, um, so yeah, um, links I'm hoping will be in the description for where you can download this gun model if you want to follow along with the same thing. Um, Alright then, so let's get into the part of animating, so uh, we can hide the tool shelf, we don't need that, and uh, don't think there's any reason why we need this little uh, side thing open either. Uh, so bring out this thing up here by just clicking on this little thing in the corner and then uh, dragging out. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to open up the dope sheet and also underneath that we may as well open up the timeline. Um, Alright so basically with the dope sheet what we're going to do, in fact before we actually get doing this we need to set up a muzzle flash sort of thing. Uh, if that makes sense, because, um, oh yeah, also, let's just, uh, get just these two layers on again. Um, so, yeah, basically what we're going to be doing is, uh, we're going to get a little animation thing, where there's a bit of recoil, in fact, no, not recoil, because you can sort of, uh, you know, there might be some times where you shoot a gun and there's no recoil, so, um, you know, it's best to leave that one out, that's the thing that is best to add in later on. So uh, instead of uh, doing that, we're just going to add a little muzzle flash mesh, as I call it. Uh, so to do that, we're going to add a UV sphere. Press R90, because it's best to have it uh, in that sort of uh, rotation. And uh, scale it up in the x-axis like that. Bring it down to the gun, scale it down, just so that it fits. Um, and then uh, you're going to want to make it however long you want the actual flash or flare even that's a better word to use mu muzzle flare uh, in the gun so uh, yeah that, that looks a good sight on something massive because that's that's what you'd expect to see coming out of a uh, machine gun or something this is just simple pistol so it'll be a little uh, quick flash like that so um, press T actually because we do need this window now and come up and press uh, smooth like that and uh, that just uh, gives it some smooth shading uh, next thing, just quickly put that back, is uh, in the materials, going to give it a new material. Whoops, call it uh, muzzle flare, like that. And we're just going to make it a sort of a bright yellowy colour. Um, take off specularity and set the emit to 4. And now, in fact, I just want, might just want to make it a bit more yellow. Somewhere around that, that sort of uh, colour should do. But uh, it's a bit too smooth for a muzzle flash, usually they've got little uh, ripples and waves in them, so we're going to add a texture, uh, it's going to be cloud, um, change the uh, name to disp. Oh yeah, by the way, uh, some of you may have noticed, this is a technique that I picked up from BlenderGuru.com, so I recommend you um, go and check that channel out, uh, website out, um, because yeah, there's a lot, whole load of great tutorials on there. Very useful, so, uh, yeah, anyway, depth to 6, well, that's sort of, uh, I don't know if 6 is the best, but that's just a thing that I think would look good. Add modifier, uh, oh yeah, we've switched to the modifier tab, by the way, if you haven't noticed. Add modifier, displace, and then use that disc protection that we just made, and, uh, you can see it's giving it some more random shapes. You might want to subsurf it a bit as well, if, uh, or subdivision subsurface as it's called in Blender 2.5. Um, yeah. Alright. Um, hmm. It's uh, looking a bit odd. But uh, we're going to put some weight paint on it anyway. So, um, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to add a new vertex group and call it um, displacement. Like that. And now if we press Control Tab, we're going to go into uh, weight paint. And uh, just press T and that will pull up this menu. Um, and uh, just going to s set the weight to 1 and just draw some stuff down the middle like this. Might want to just uh, 
hide the displacement modifier just to make things a little bit easier. And uh, I'm just gonna, it's very simple really, just to start applying this weight paint around it like this. And uh, it's just actually just go into the solid view to hide these annoying shadows. Um, so yeah, um, it's a pretty slow process, but it's uh, generally, uh, it, it gets a nice effect at the end of it, so you know. And basically what we're aiming for is to get it more red in the middle, um, and then it slowly fades out to a sort of blue colour. Alright, let's just decrease the weight a bit. Um, Alright, then here we go. Just, uh, you know, just spraying it on is a good time. Um, Alright, then there we go. And, uh, right, it's just a bit more there. And, uh, yep, there we go. And basically, um, all weight paint does uh, in this basic technique, I guess, is uh, it's the more the strong it is, which is the more red it is, the more the displacement modifier will have an effect on the shape. Um, and you know, just you might have a little bit at the end, but not too much. Um, but yeah, and the more blue it is, then uh, or this shade, the more it's near this shade of blue, the weaker it is. So um, yeah, very simple. So uh, come out of weight paint by pressing Control Tab, and now we're back in object mode. Uh, press Alt Z again or Alt Z if uh, you want to go back into textured view. Let's just save that vertex group. We're gonna save as uh, displacement uh, like that and let's preview this displacement modifier now increase the strength because it sort of lost a bit of uh, shape now put it back into the gun like that so it's just sort of going in and now we've got a nice little uh, muzzle flash coming out of the end there so we'll save that again right so the next step is to make the uh, uh, like the muzzle flash actually do something um, at the moment it's just sitting there and it's going to look really fake so we need to animate when it appears and when it doesn't appear um, so that's pretty simple that's where the dope sheet comes in and that's also the same with the actual rigging and uh, we're going to use a dope sheet in the action editor uh, because it's um really is the best way to uh, make something for example if you've seen a walk cycle and you're wondering how on earth they get such an exact walk each and every time uh, they use the dope sheet to make just one little stride, or two strides technically, and um, then they use uh, the NLA editor to uh, keep, um, what, what would you call it, like uh, putting it, you know, just making more and more, just duplicating the animations really. So um, yeah, we're going to use that technique. So, uh, change it from here, from dope sheet to action editor, and uh, just add a new action and call it shoot like that or whatever you want to call it and this is basically going to make a simulation of the gun getting fired um, alright and so uh, let's start off uh, with the rig and uh, just thought actually let's just uh, go into object mode and uh, let's parent the oops object mode with this um, let's parent the muzzle flash to the uh, rig so um, yeah shift uh, right, uh, yeah, right click, control P with empty groups, and uh, now we're gonna have a whole load of super little groups in our uh, uh, what you call it, our vertex group section. So let's just delete all of those and uh, add one and call it uh, rig. In fact, let's just call it parent. And um, what we're gonna do is basically. Uh, yeah, let's just select the parent bone of this, and um, uh, in fact, ooh, what should we do? Um, hmm. Yeah. Um, sorry about that. it's a bit uh, confusing as to how I'm going to do this. Right. So with this vertex group, we're going to choose the parent, and um, what we're going to do is while weight paint is on at uh, the maximum then um, we can just press tab parent assign and now oh stupid sh 
should be all red. Okay, never mind. Uh, oh, that's probably why. It needs to be a strength of 100. Uh, well, one even. There we go. Set the strength to one, and now it should be all like that. Now, if we rotate the, um, what do you call it, the control bone, then uh, the muzzle flesh goes with it. Lovely. So that we now know that that's going to be at the end of that gun whenever we need it. So, all right. Let's uh, just get on with it now, because we've been talking about this for ages, but we haven't actually done anything. So, uh, let's start off with the, with the animation of the gun firing. So, I'm just going to make sure that you don't apply any IPO settings to uh, the control bone, because we're going to use that for loads of stuff, rather than um, just this, you know, one little action. Well, I'm assuming that's what you're going to want to do then. So, with the trigger, just uh, press I, location. And then, in fact, let's just uh, stick that on uh, the keyframe of zero, because then uh, it makes it a little bit easier when reading the number. So, go forwards five frames, and we should be on frame uh, frame five if we've uh, got uh, this at frame zero. And then uh, just bring this back. So, and yeah, just not too far, because otherwise, you know, uh, it will take a while to get to that point, just to the point where it stops. Um, don't move your mouse any further than that, so about there. Uh, press I again, and uh, yeah. What that's basically doing is you want, over the period of 5 frames, for it to start there and go all the way over to there. And uh, that's basically the pulling of a trigger, and about frame 3, maybe 2 actually, if I know 3, uh, just save this. That's when you're going to want this part here to pull back. So I, location, and then go to frame 5, and just pull it back, like that, and uh, there we go, I, location, and then go forwards, and bow up to frame 10, and then pull it back into position, there. And uh, it's going to look quite weird, but if we just set the end frame to 15, you should then see a simple little uh, shooting motion start. Um, there we go. I uh, just thought, by the time it gets to frame, uh, let's just get this uh, dope sheet a bit more spread out so we can see it a bit better. There we go. Um, by the time it gets to, and same with the timeline. Um, there we go. Alright, so at frame. Let's see, when does it, uh, it goes there? Alright, uh, yeah, at frame 10, we're going to want it to go back to its original point, like that. Just to uh, keep things smooth and stuff, rather than uh, having a little uh, map big, it's just to prevent choppiness, basically, make it look more dynamic. Um, so, yeah, uh, it's playing a bit slowly, that's because, uh, you know, it's got to calculate quite a few things. Um, you know, when it when it's rendered, it should be going nice and quickly, like a uh, gun should. As I said, I'm not going to add any recoil, uh, simply because there's going to be many little, um, what, what would you call it, uh, scenarios if you're making a big action movie. And, um, you know, as I said, there might be some times where you won't have recoil or you won't have as much. So, you know, shooting a gun in one hand will usually make it fly back a bit more because there's less um, strength keeping it, well, preventing it from doing that with two hands it would have a lot less so um you get the idea unless you want to make loads and loads of little pose libraries um uh using each and every little gunshot you can then it's a bit pointless um so yeah next thing is to get this muzzle flash appearing and then disappearing so let's just save because we've done that now um in the action editor oh that's, that's weird um set the rig again all right um I'm hoping, uh, yeah, hang on. When I select this, it should still be in this shoot section. But it's not. Oh well. We'll, uh, we'll get around that. So, um, or I guess what you could do is every time the gun shoots, you could just insert this little keyframe thing. It's pretty simple. So, uh, where was I? Right. Trigger pulls back, and about here where the gun fires, as you can see, because this thing's pulling back, uh, we're going to want to add some stuff so uh, go to the frame before that which is frame 2 and then uh, in the uh, material section set the transparency to 0 then press I go forward one frame 
then set the alpha to 1 uh, another frame forward and I'm gonna want two frames where it's visible so uh, let's press I on that again and then set the alpha to 0 on the frame after that then press I and um, what that's gonna do is uh, it's just gonna set a little flash um, now there are ways to get the displacement modifier to go all really random and then every single frame it's uh, a different shape but um, it's, it's very hard to integrate that into the dope sheet uh, it's, a bit, it's a very different tutorial, take you some time, took me time to figure out how to do it. Um, so, you know, just for the purposes of this, we're going to skip that part. Um, I bet now you're feeling a bit ripped off, because, you know, uh, I said I'd include the dope sheet. Uh, sorry, the uh, muzzle flare, but um, I'm only doing half of it, but sorry about that. Anyway, so that's the general animation part of that done. Now to uh, give that nice little relaying effect or something um, let's uh, go into the NLA editor and you can just uh, click on these little thi I don't know these little red things and uh, it's not actually doing it with this for some reason click right click oh hang on if we select the actual object there we go now let's try it oh never mind uh, but if, as you can see, we've got a little uh, shooting. This, this is the uh, this little uh, box, I guess. That symbolizes the shooting action. So if you just put it like that. Then uh, you know it just uh, you know you can duplicate it by pressing Shift D as much as you like, putting it in next to the next one. And um, as you can see now, we've got three shots. So that's one, as you can see there. Press Alt Z, and uh, you can see a bit better. Then. Uh, just deselect the stupid little muzzle flash because it looks retarded. Uh, that's the second shot there, and then the third. You can go on however long you like with that. So, um, yep, that's been the animating tutorial. Uh, you can use similar methods, as I say, for walk cycle, stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, thanks for watching. This has been Whitehead King. Hope you enjoyed this uh, series of tutorials, even though it's only two parts. Um, so yeah, as I say, thanks for watching, comment, rate, subscribe, visit my website, follow me on Twitter, all that stuff I said you could do is in the description. Um, so, yep, thanks for watching, and goodbye.